What is going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a play test of the New Balance Tequila V4 Plus. Really, really pumped to get some play time in these. I am, I know it's been a little bit since the initial review, have had a lot of boots to go through. So these I am extra, extra excited for because the previous generation, the V4, was one of my favorite boots of 2023. So I imagine these are gonna be just as good, if not even marginally better than those. We are out on an AG pitch, so that just means keep in mind some of the comments that I'm making are relative and relevant to an AG pitch. I'll talk a little bit about what they feel like on FG as I have been able to wear them now on some FG pitches as well, uh, and we'll get right into it. So if you guys know, I have been uh, a huge fan of the Wee Foot socks. You guys can get the discount code down in the description box below. It is code NOAH20 for 20% 20 off of your Wee Foot order. These are the thin variation. As you can see, they're very stretchy, very thin. Wrap your foot really nicely. I'm a huge fan of these grip socks. So go pick out what you like, whether it's the thin or the thick ones. They've got grip on the inside and the outside, which is huge. So really, really helps with performance when you're inside the boots which is awesome. So the Tequila V4 Plus is a fully hypo-knit upper. It's got some new textured materials. Um, I'll reference my original review uh, several times throughout this video. You've got some new texturing here on the lateral and the medial side. The same really nice and unique sole plate with those bladed TPU studs on or they call them quote unquote rim studs on the edge of that sole plate. And then you've got a couple different things that they've improved including the weave of the hypo knit and some of the texturing here on the forefoot as well so they've just done some minor tweaks to make it i think a little bit more uh soft straight out of the box a little bit more accommodating i imagine for most foot shapes these are a half a size up from my normal 9 us and they fit absolutely perfectly as you can see my toe comes right up to the end i've got a tiny bit of space but that is perfect uh, exactly what i want from my football boots so these are uh, almost broken in completely. I've been able to wear them a couple times now, and this, of course, being a proper play test, we'll get into some of the ways that this boot is breaking in. I find that these are exceptionally comfortable straight out of the box. They are one of the best boots for wide foot shapes as well, um, especially if you actually get the sizing right. And as I said before, based on your US sizing, I would go half a size up. These are a 9.5. I usually wear a 9 US and pretty much everything else apart from uh, the New Balance Furon and uh, I go down a half a size in some of the Asics boots. But um, regardless, these are just absolutely fantastic as far as the fit and comfort. There you go, first look on feet. As you can see, they're very, very soft straight out of the box. The Hypo Knit really does a nice job of wrapping your foot and this is how they were straight out of the box too, which is a pretty cool thing for a knit football boot. I think knit is getting to the point, especially in the New Balance brand, to the point where you can slip on a Furon or a Tequila and basically be perfectly comfortable straight out of the box, which is really nice. So let's hop into some of the, uh, the warm up and the play test. So they obviously make a wide fit variation of this boot as well. I have yet to actually find it online. So that's something that I would keep in mind if you're somebody who has super, super wide feet. They do make a wide fit variation. It's just something that I have not um, seen. If I do between now and when the video goes up, if I do actually find the, uh, the wide fit variation, I'll put the link in the description box below. I know quite a few guys were asking about it just because because I think there is a definitely a population out there who really wants one of the mainstream boots without having to deal with some of the you know Copa Mundial. They don't want like a classic leather boot, and people actually want a boot that's going to fit them really well, but it's a little more modern. And unfortunately, a lot of modern day boots are going a little thinner. I would say, um, whether it be the vapor effect, the Superfly effect. You know, you see a lot of those boots going a little bit wider. One suggestion I do have though, if you really aren't gonna be a fan of the New Balance boots, which is ridiculous because they're, in my opinion, either number one or number two boot brands out there right now, I would highly recommend looking at Japanese brands because Japanese boots are usually built on a little bit of a wider last. 
and that's gonna be really helpful for those of you who are looking for that wider fit. First impressions though, these are absolutely fantastic. Touch on the ball is great. They feel almost identical to the previous generation, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If you do have the previous generation, I probably would just wait until those break because I don't think these are that much better than those ones. Um, but these are absolutely worth upgrading from something else that you have, uh, especially if it's like any other knit boot aside from the GX, like I would say these are top, top, top. So that's my recommendation, especially if, you, uh, if you're already in the New Balance family, don't think it's worth it quite yet. One thing you will notice with a boot like this is how, because of how soft the upper is and they don't have any reinforcement, you know, cables or any sort of extra material here, on the midfoot, whether it be the lateral or the medial side, you're gonna have a little bit more kind of uh, softness to the upper. Yes, it still feels incredibly responsive uh, because of the sole plate and because of the way this hypo knit is constructed, but I will say it's not as locked in as, you know, say a Vapor or something more like a speed boot. Like the Furon feels a little bit more locked in than these do, um, but that's kind of the nature. Like these fit much more like a Magista Obra than a speed boot. Like this is basically a low top Magista Obra. That's kind of how it feels. And I've had no issues with lateral stability. So every time I come in and I make a cut, when I'm turning, I don't feel that there's really any rollover on the side of the shoe, especially when I'm wearing any sort of grip sock. Uh, that being said, they aren't, again, they aren't as insanely locked in and responsive as even the Furon or a different type of speed boot that you might have. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are somebody who absolutely has to have the most locked in sensation uh, possible. This then ends up being the dilemma of this football boot, right? Is that in a situation like this, when you have, when you have such a, an amazing boot straight out of the box, it's really hard to find things with it that are uh, things you would complain about. And that's something that, you know, I struggle to find with these boots is really good feel, nice, is really finding the things that actually are, you know, sort of annoying about these boots, because there really aren't many. I think the main complaint of this boot, at least in the comments section, from what I've seen, is the heel area, which I actually have zero issues with. Ooh, hello. I have no issues with at all, and so that's something that is gonna be kind of a personal preference. I found I had heel issues with the first generation. Oy, oy, oy. We're gonna do that one back again. So I had heel issues with the first generation um, in a size nine, but then I actually got the length correct and it totally took out like any hot spots in this area. Although I do admit that the heel area in these boots can feel a little bit tight sometimes. I have no issues with them. Which then begs the question, why would you pick anything else outside of this? And really, uh, I think it comes down to like personal brand preference. And also if there's something that you feel like fits your foot even more perfectly than this, which is hard to believe because, oh geez, there we go. Uh, which is hard to believe because this boot really does accommodate, I think, most people super well. So that's something that you're just gonna have to decide on your own. Like, you know, a boot like this that is so accommodating, so comfortable, you know, it's hard to really say anything bad about these. And that's the, that's the tough part with them. Sizing, half size up, heel area feels pretty good. Um, maybe I'll, take this opportunity to take one off, which I don't need to because they already feel broken in, which is amazing. Um, you know, could you use a little bit of like whatever New Balance wants to come up with for flywire cables, like Nike boots, maybe? I think that would make this boot like incomprehensibly good. The other thing is the sole plate on an AG surface like this might be a little too aggressive for some people. On FG, it's amazing because it gives you such a good like conical stud. The, the orange studs obviously here are conical and then you've got those rim studs. And so the conical studs really 
dig into the ground while those rim studs help you with some of that slippage that people sometimes get on uh, an FG surface. Whereas with here, I think I would prefer probably the AG model. Like if I was to play in these 100%, like if we were playing on, like last year uh, on at Flower City, if I were to play with the New Balance Tequila instead of the GX, as you guys know, I got a pair of custom GX AGs and I probably, if I was gonna play in this full time, I would have gone for an AG model of this. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. I tend to prefer like the safer route when it comes to AG pitches, but I like to do play tests on AG just because it makes it the most consistent surface. And also it just, you know, I know what I'm gonna get coming to this pitch every single time. So it gives me like a good kind of, kind of measurement of what different boots feel like on the exact same surface. Whereas if I go to an FG pitch, you're kind of like, you know, it depends if it rained the day before or it hasn't rained for a while and all, whether they cut the grass and all that stuff. So that's kind of why I do most of my testing on AG. Um, but these are honestly like, I, I'm being so nitpicky because these are excellent football boots. Like these are, there's a reason these are always in my top three um, or usually top two as far as my training and game day rotation because they are that bloody good. So yeah, let's get on with some more uh, striking surface stuff. Let's say, so let's say you're a person who really likes the GX but doesn't want that same grippy sensation, but you love the way the knit feels around your foot, the Tequila is the boot for you. And the reason for that is because as you're dribbling, you get all the same benefits, right? You're turning, you're doing all sorts of skill moves. All that stuff is very, very good for um, that knit football kind of sock-like feel on feet. And then as you come into a passing or shooting drill like this, all we're gonna do is a little like up turn and then I get to pick whichever cone I wanna go, little move. And then I'm gonna start with more like basic instep passing, like a little more firm passing to get my legs warmed up. And then you guys will see over the course of this drill, I'll do some a little more like finishing type drills and then we'll get into some more proper shooting. But the point is, is that these boots just do such a fantastic job of wrapping your foot and the touch on the ball is just excellent. I mean, every little, every little nook and cranny is kind of filled in basically. Like it, it really does seamlessly wrap your foot and the hypo knit upper is one of the softest knits on the market. And that's what I think makes this boot really, really good. Oh, hello. Well, definitely doesn't make the player good. We're gonna leave that one in. So, <laughs> jeez Louise. All right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one of those things, right? Never perfect. And that's why we come out here and we train. Beautiful. Yeah, striking feels really good. I don't really notice the difference between the previous generation and these. Um, the excess little kind of texturing that's on the instep and, or the lateral and medial side of the, uh, of the midfoot, it does add a little bit of padding maybe, but not enough to like, I don't know, make any, let's actually swap angles, um, make any like significant difference with the shooting sensation. So I would say, you know, obviously get this boot if you are somebody who's all good with New Balance. Um, if you are somebody who really likes the GX but doesn't want as much grip. Nice, needs to be on the ground there though. Uh, that likes the GX but doesn't like as much grip, I would say these are absolutely the boot you need to go for. Although I will say the GX and the Furon are actually pretty similar just because of the striking surface. So maybe if you're a Magista connoisseur and that's what you really liked, maybe, nice. Um, maybe that would be something that you would go for because these are like, as close to Magista over one as I think I've ever tried in a low top variation. I would say too that similar to the Magista, just making sure I'm in frame here as we get some strikes off. Um, but similar to the Magista, these boots feel so excellent to strike a ball with. And although I don't feel like as natural as 
the Furon, which gives you kind of that extra bit of striking surface with the canopy, that like fold over canopy action, I would say, ooh, a little whip and swerve there. Um, I would say that these give you 90, 90% of what those do. Oh man, you can see where I'm trying to hit that like upper, upper left-hand corner. Um, decent. Um, so let's flop sides, but it really is like a, it's, it's like 90% of what the Furon's gonna give you as far as like a, the feel of striking that ball. Which for some people, of course, you're gonna be like, oh, well, I want something that's a little more, it feels a little more like, you know, less forward kind of attack mode and more just uh, sort of like a maestro feeling boot that you're just gonna feel really nice passing the ball and stuff with. And that's what these give you for sure. Oh, wow. Well, it's nice because we don't have anywhere to go. Beautiful, all right. That's that weak foot action, baby. Just training it. So that's where, you know, again, when you're thinking about, when you're thinking about these types of things for your own boots, that's where it's really important to evaluate like, okay, hey, you know, do I get the AG version of the nice rip? AG, AG version of the Furon because that's the feel, like I want that striking surface, but I don't, I don't want the aggressive kind of chevron traction of the FG model. But if you want a more neutral shape, you go with the Tequila. I know I mentioned earlier about the uh, situation with some of the rollover, and I gotta say, I've experienced absolutely nothing. Ooh, a little far away from me there. Yeah, absolutely nothing as far as rollover goes. These have fit absolutely perfectly throughout this whole play test. You know, we're out here for almost an hour already and like every little cut, every little thing that I'm doing, manipulating the ball, all that stuff, making it a little more, uh, how do you say, like less predictable or less, less predicted. So it's not like a, it's not like a perfect movement every time you're kind of reacting and stuff. Absolutely zero issues with lockdown so far, which has been pretty amazing actually, given that these boots don't have any have any uh, like proper lateral stability items, if you will, or technology compared to some of the other boots on the market. <clears throat> and I think, <clears throat> lovely, good hit there. Um, I do think that that was on purpose from New Balance. I think New Balance is trying to create the most natural and sort of seamless sensation on feet, which the Tequila V4 Plus definitely, ooh, definitely delivers on. So, other considerations for buying the Tequila. Now, you might be looking at GX, you might be looking at Predator, you might be looking at Furon. Uh, those are kind of, I mean, Furon, yes, is more of a speed boot, so let's maybe take that one out of the equation and focus on the main competitors, which are those three, the GX, the Tequila V4, plus, and the, uh, the Predator. And I would say, oh man, it's that same shot I hit earlier where it like clips the back of my right ankle. Just need to get that set a little bit out of my body a little bit more. Um, so I will talk about this probably in a full comparison video, Oof. full comparison video, but I would say GX is what I'm gonna choose most of the time in the AG model, just because I, I prefer something that's got a little bit grip of, a, of like a grip sensation and I love sort of the striking surface that the GX and the Furon give me. So that's number one. Honestly, I'm probably gonna pick Tequila as number two. Goodness gracious. I'm gonna go grab another one. Give me three more shots on this side. Um, I think Tequila is gonna be number two just because I prefer something that's a little more knit based as opposed to the synthetic on the Predator. And don't get me wrong, as I said in the GX and Predator video, I think the Predator is like a more impressive boot just as a product even than the GX. And I would say that rings true for the, the Predator over this one as well. I think the Predator is like the most 
iconic looking, but it's also the most kind of impressive, technologically speaking, with that hybrid touch 2.0 upper and stuff. But for me, and this is why I always, nice, there it is. This is why I always tell people to get boots. Like, don't worry about what marketing says. Don't worry about what other people say. Don't worry about people judging you. You know, if you're a 13 year old and you're watching this video going, well, you know, I need my, damn man. I need, <laughs> I need to focus on talking or playing, not both. If you're a, you know, 13 year old and you're like, hey, I really, I really, really want like the coolest boots. I gotta tell you, it's not worth it. I've gone down that rabbit hole before. Back when I was 12 and 13, I had the, this like silver and blue, like Tunit F30s. They weren't even like the exchangeable stud F50s. Nice. And I gotta tell you what, that was not the way to go. So for me, pick what fits you the best and pick what's gonna make you the most comfortable player on the pitch. All right, fam, so that is gonna wrap up the Tequila play test. As I was saying, get the boots that fit you the best. And I honestly think that most people are gonna find the Tequila fits them really well. Especially if you get the sizing correctly, they are gonna fit absolutely beautifully, super seamless fit. Um, I do have a little bit of hot spot on the outside now that I've been in them for about an hour now. Uh, and that is just a product of me having really wide feet in the midfoot area, especially down here. Um, but for me, this is a top, top, top football boot. I think the construction of it, the softness of this hypo knit upper, the fact that there's really no kind of external reinforcement, it's impressive how much lockdown there is in a boot like this that doesn't have any sort of you know cables or any sort of extra material that you see a lot of other manufacturers putting on the lateral and medial sides of the midfoot to give you that extra lockdown these guys have managed to do something really special with this boot and as i said before in the you know sort of power control i would say more control sort of category of football boots for me these are number two behind the GX. And the only reason the GX is gonna win out is because number one, I have worn GX now for like two years and I absolutely love them. And number two is that those boots have the grip elements that I'm personally looking for over something like this that has no grip. That being said, I'm gonna wear these a ton in training and probably in games because these are just really, really, really exceptionally comfortable and they do the job pretty much flawlessly. Like they're not perfect in uh, anything outside of maybe comfort. Comfort, they're like one of the most amazing boots on the planet, um, especially for a knit football boot. But I would say just generally speaking as an overall product, the Tequila V4 Plus is a must try, I think for most people. And that's something that, um, yeah, hasn't really changed since last model. Uh, the V4 uh, is, is one of those, God, this crow above me. I'm sure you can hear it on the microphone. Um, it, it, the, the V4 and the V4 Plus are both excellent. If you can get the V4 on sale, I probably would just go for that first and then you can find these when those break um, because there's not that much of a difference between the two. Just make sure you get the right sizing. Um, but that's gonna be it for the playtest of the Tequila V4 Plus. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure you go in the description box below. You'll find the uh, two things. One is the link to sign up for my free email newsletter, which I'll do like boot news and all that stuff. I've really enjoyed doing some writing there. And uh, so that's just free. You can just sign up. You just throw your email in there and then I'll email you once a week. And uh, and then the link for the grip socks will also be in the description box below. So I appreciate you guys being here. If you have any more questions about touch or about lockdown, feel, um, performance on pitch, just let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to everybody there as well. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see y'all in the next video.